Okay, let's take a deep dive into this one today. Pandora Scents Milano Privé. So I'm sure at this point you guys know this, but Pandora Scents is kind of a an offset brand of Paris Corner. So in a roundabout way, this is a Paris Corner, which in and of itself has become a clone brand that has been popularized here within the past year or so. They've been pumping them out like crazy. And Pandora Scents is like a little offset brand of theirs as well. And you can see that on the sticker on the bottom and on the box and all of that stuff. And at first glance, the bottle might give a little bit of it away just kind of by their color choice here um, on the front plaque, maybe some of the gold accents. And if that doesn't do it, the name probably will start to give some more clues as well. Milano Privé. 1 million Privé, you kind of see what I'm talking about. That brown that they use on the front of the bottle on the clone here is almost spot on. The lighting is making it a bit of a challenge to pick up. Definitely looks closer in person than it does on camera with the crazy bright lights and all of that stuff. But yes, it is indeed a 1 million Privé clone. And what's so special about 1 million Privé that they would decide to clone it? Well, this one was a pretty big deal. Uh, back when it was first released, it pretty quickly caught on and was getting a lot of love here in the fragrance community. And just like most things, they ended up discontinuing it to make room for more flankers to come. And that's been the process for years and years at this point. And it's a shame because One Million Privé is amazing stuff. It was one of my personal favorite scents. And you don't just have to take my word for it here. If you go back a few years on the channel, back when it was in production and you can purchase it, uh, I was featuring it all the time in fall and even winter videos, lists, and so on. I love this stuff and I wasn't the only one. And generally, my rule of thumb is when something gets discontinued and it's to the point where you just can't buy it anymore, I just stopped talking about it. So just because I haven't featured this in videos recently, it doesn't mean I don't love this scent because I really like it a lot. And it's pretty cool to now have a clone that you can pick up and enjoy if you don't have the real one. And so what we're gonna do today is just kind of run you through how this one smells, how close it is to One Million Privé, how it performs, the quality comparison and all of that stuff. You know, we'll start off with the note breakdown. I'll pull up my notes here. Up top, we have cinnamon, blood mandarin. In the mid, we have tobacco and myrrh. In the base, we have tonka bean and patchouli. And let me jump over to One Million Privé's note breakdown. Cinnamon and blood mandarin up top, tobacco and myrrh in the mid, tonka bean and patchouli in the base. So pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory there. And I also want you guys to know that note breakdown doesn't mean everything. You know, something could have identical note breakdowns and smell completely different. Maybe not completely different, but have a lot of differences. Uh, it could just be something that they make up for marketing or whatever it is. So that's not always the telltale sign. But when you do smell this one, you spray it up in the air, you spray it on skin, whatever your method is. If you have any sort of experience with One Million Privé, you're going to pick up on the similarities instantly. And so how does this one open up? It does start off with that nice, fruity and semi-sweet blood mandarin kind of opening there. It's not a fruity scent by nature. However, that does give off a little bit of that support, but you do get a lot of the cinnamon. And same thing with One Million Privé. When you first open that one up, it's cinnamon right off the initial spray. And I think that's part of the thing that makes this scent DNA smells so much like fall. It almost smells like a, a cinnamon candle when you initially try this one. You know, it's a very realistic, very high quality cinnamon accord used in One Million Privé and they hit the nail on the head with this one as well. And so it does very much give off an autumn type of cozy feeling. This would be great for a chilly fall day when you're wearing a hoodie and that sort of thing. The leaves are changing colors, just kind of what you would imagine fall to look like. This would be the, the scent version of that image. And working pretty quickly into it, uh, the tonka bean, the myrrh, of course the tobacco, one of my favorite parts of it, those notes start to come into play uh, not long after that, that sediment opening. So it gives it a little bit of a smokiness. You're getting a, a pretty heavy handed dose of a slightly syrupy sweetness from the tonka bean, the myrrh combination. The patchouli to me gives a little bit more of a masculine balance in the base, kind of providing a woody aspect as well. 
And again, that's kind of what made One Million Privé so special is just kind of the images that it puts into your head when you smell it. And also the fact that it's kind of one of a kind, you know, when it comes down to it, yes, it's a One Million flanker and maybe there's bits and pieces of One Million in there still, but they really took it to the next level and they increased just to me the value of that scent dramatically with One Million Privé. They just bring a lot more to the table and they make it more interesting and suitable for fragrance enthusiasts. And that's where the bulk majority of the hype came from was here in the fragrance community. Uh, you know, outside of that, when you're looking at all of the retail sales and everything, it probably wasn't as big of a star or as big of a hit. And so generally that's kind of how it goes. Either something does really well for the masses and then therefore it's hated in the community or it does really well in the community, but the masses just don't pick it up because it's not as mainstream as they're used to. And that was kind of the uh, story with One Million Privé. And it's not the only scent from the line that, that has happened to. You know, there's been a few other really good ones in the line that at some point has been discontinued. You know, there's even One Million Cologne, that fresher version that just didn't stick around for long. And even outside of the One Million line, you know, you got the Invictus Aquas. And even outside of Paco Rabanne, so many other designer scents that have bitten the dust just because it was time for something new. And so that's a long-winded way of me saying that the One Million Privé DNA doesn't really have major similarities to anything else in particular. It does smell kind of like what you would expect a fall fragrance to smell like, leaning heavily on the cinnamon and the sweet notes and a little bit of a smokiness. But they did it in such a way that it's not, you know, a replica or a clone of anything else. And so when it was discontinued and hard to find, a lot of people were devastated because there weren't really any good alternatives until now. And One Million Privé, it was released a while ago and also discontinued a while ago. And this one just popped up. So they're really working through the backlogs here and kind of bringing back to life some of these great discontinued scents that we miss. And I'm all for it. So talking about the performance here, uh, performance is something that was great on One Million Privé. It was kind of what you would expect from a One Million scent. Um, generally, they're all going to do pretty well. And I found the same to be with this one. You know, it's an eight, nine hour scent in terms of longevity. It's got pretty respectable projection. It's not a skin scent. It's not a projection monster, you know, like maybe the original One Million once was or like in Versace Eros or something. I find it to be more in the middle. And in this case here, maybe slightly leaning towards the softer end of things, just a little bit. It's, to me, a little bit more of a personal scent, um, but still with enough adequate projection to where people can smell you. In terms of quality, it's fantastic. I really can't complain. And that's been the case with a lot of the clones coming from some of these newer clone brands that have been popping up, or at least the ones that are beginning hype, you know, Fragrance World. Paris Corner, also Pandora Scents, and even Latafa and things like that. They've really been pumping them out. I haven't had too many issues with quality. You know, they're not going to compete up against some really, really high-end designers, you know, thinking the Dior's and Chanel's and things. They're going to fall behind there. Definitely going to fall behind some of your beloved niche brands as well. But I do think these can compete with some of the things in the, the mid-range to slightly below mid-range designer price point. So, you know, the $40, $50 designers, I would say these are pretty on par with those. And the price point of these is also right around the same. And so I think it's a pretty even playing field when you're comparing it that way. And for the most part, I don't see Paco Rabanne to be among the leagues of your Dior's and Chanel's and even some, you know, higher end YSL's and Armani's. I don't think they're quite there. I think they're a touch below. That's just my personal preference. I do like the sense, but I do think generally they have a track record of leaving, leaning a little bit more synthetic in some areas than some of those other brands. And so I would say this one does a pretty good job of, of getting very close to that quality standpoint that One Million Privé does have or had at one point before they stopped making it. So I don't really have any complaints. Um, if you are looking for One Million Privé, something that smells similar to it without going out there and paying a ton of money for the real one, then this is the solution to your problem right here. And I was actually just talking about this in a video the other day, I believe, or maybe I was just talking to myself about it, but I don't really think I have too many backup bottles of One Million Privé. I might have one, so two bottles total, which to me is, you know, doesn't feel like it's enough. 
realistically, I'll probably never work through them, but I like that feeling of having enough for a lifetime because I like the scent that much. This kind of alleviates some of that worry for me just because I can wear this now and not feel guilty about wearing my real ones and wasting them or burning them away quicker. Um, this is how close it is. And I would feel totally comfortable with wearing this one through fall as a substitute to 1 million Privé. So definitely check this one out for yourself if you're interested. Uh, I can't really see any negatives to this one besides the fact that it's a clone and some people don't like clones. But I think in this instance here, when it comes to discontinued fragrances, it doesn't get much better than that. Making something available to people who uh, it originally wasn't available to them at the time is a big deal to me. Now, I will link this one down below. There's a good chance it's sold out right now. I wanted to get the word out there to you now, so that way when it does pop back up into stock, you'll know about it and, and you know buy it without maybe not having information about it beforehand. Because generally, if I were trying to time uploading this video with it coming into stock, it would sell out quickly anyway and wouldn't really be all that beneficial. So could be sold out now. If you jump on my mailing list and my texting list, I will send you a notification when this restocks along with any other rare, discontinued, hard to find scent, even like the real 1 million Privé. If it popped up, I would let you know. To your own Parfum, things like that, I'm always on the hunt for in the mailing list, texting list is your one-stop shop. You'll get notified first when stuff like this pops up. So I would imagine this one will pop up again here soon, maybe end of this month, early next, somewhere around in that range. So make sure if you want notified, jump on down below and pick yourself up a bottle once you can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.